Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Well, if you weren't already aware, good evening. It's 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 Monday night. I'm your host, Sana River. Um, we we had just previously about half an hour ago tried to uh, talk about Batman with some musical examples that goes into a Batman theme. Um, I wanted to present to you some some desk desktop audio and some some music scores. It's just some simple music examples, but uh, um, they didn't work. So we're just gonna we're just gonna talk about Batman. Uh, what really should go into a Batman music theme? In any Batman music theme, you know, even even if there are future projects with Batman or 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 characters um, that are inspired by him. Um, you know, let's talk about music. Let's talk about Batman. Um, so anyway, it's kind of a rough start, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's what makes things fun and exciting. So, um, good evening. I'm sound engraver, uh, looking good, looking stunning. Thank you, my prof, uh, sounding good. Yeah. S sounding good. Now here's, here's the thing before we talk about Batman and, and Batman music, OBS, um, is, is not really intuitive when it, when, when, when it comes to audio capture, when it comes to capturing audio from your desktop. Now I know how to record my desktop audio with OBS. If it's a fixed commentary video, if it's, if it's pre-recorded streaming, I'm going to have to troubleshoot that. Um, now good, good, good news is I know how to stream through OBS with my violin or my voice because you, you heard my voice. So, you know, my, my microphone is, is being captured just, just fine. Um, but we'll have to we'll have to work on showing some musical examples on my desktop on my computer. Uh, I've done it before too. I've done it with Logic Pro, so I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I feel like I just kind of uh, hit the ground running with with the stream. So, um, what are we talking about? We are talking about Batman. I. Um, it, it's been this last, you know, three to four weeks where I've really, 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 really enjoyed seeing the prof play Batman Arkham Origins. It's it's a great game. It's it's really fun to watch the the playthrough or 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 the, the gameplay. Now I don't play the game myself, but I really, really enjoy watching it. And and just the more I'm in the setting of that game, I just am more and more inspired by the character. Batman. I just, I think he's a really, really good character. He's a very interesting character. I have, I don't, I would say a very minimal experience with him as a kid, um, as, as a character. I, I knew about DC. I, I knew about Superman. I knew about Wonder Woman. I knew about Batman. Uh, I saw a little bit, just a tiny bit of the Batman animated series when I was a kid. Um, love, love the animation. I still love the animation. I loved it as a kid when I saw it and I, I love it now. Um, but uh, I was never really immersed in in the world of of DC uh, of the the DC universe that that world, and so I didn't have a, a very strong connection with someone like Batman. But you know now now that the Prof and I are seeing really inspiring shows like Agents of Shield, we just we just love that show. We love the character of Phil Coulson. Um, we, we love the character like Captain America. I, I think, I think I know why <laughs> Batman is a character that is visited and revisited time and time again. Now, unfortunately, of course, we all know that, um, the, the many interpretations of Batman have been, uh, misaligned as, as of late, you know, as, as we see Batman now very, um, vengeful, just so, so full of, uh, vengeance but in in a bad way in a very dark way like 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 character the punisher you know for for the anti-heroes but batman's not an anti-hero he's you know i can hear the prof talk about it all the time you know with his commentary and his his old videos about batman but um it's, it's really kind of just watching the gameplay of arkham origins uh where where you see that kind of world and you see that kind of story and it's like wow like the character Bruce Wayne, he can he can do anything with his tragedy and with his money. And he chooses to do the absolute virtuous. He is a very, shall I say, godly character, if, if you want to um, equate that with um, someone, someone uh, of, of a saintly nature. If you want to talk about uh, like a, a religious figure or, or a religious 
role model to look up to. Now, he, when I say religion, I'm, I'm saying that quite loosely and more symbolically with someone like Batman. Um, but, you know, instead of taking his his personal tragedy, witnessing the murder of his parents um, and, and taking it, you know, ha- taking his wealth and, and, and destroying people who destroyed his life, um, he, he instead pursues justice and in bringing the justice. So just a very fascinating character. So, you know, I wanted to not commemorate, but, you know, you know, pay homage to the character by composing an original theme and, and talking about music and, and how music is incorporated into a character like Batman or is incorporated into a setting like his setting with, with Gotham city. And so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Let's go ahead and welcome the chat. Um, I, I know I lost a lot of people from the, from the previous stream, but hopefully you guys are back. <laughs> hopefully you see StreamYard in my YouTube channel, but uh, we've got big Al saying take two. And I do love StreamYard cause I can access the, uh, the chat really easily. Professor says, and we're back. We are back. And Dr. Y with his Batman returns. Yes. And we're not talking about nanas or datas because Batman was an orphan after all. I mean, technically he's not an orphan in that he had Alfred, but you know, we, we've got that. And then we've got Go Team Ghost Planet Go saying hi to everyone. And um, and and also saying we are both disenfranchised with Batman for personal reasons. Um, you know, actually I I I, I I choose not to be, you know, I choose not to be because it's like, there's so much good Batman out there that just, you know, just spend time with that. And it's great. Um, so, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about um, what really goes on musically, you know, what music of any interpretation of Batman, especially good and, you know, good interpretation of Batman. What what music goes into a character like this? Um, I want to start out just talking about the, the three main figures who are known for Batman uh, as far as his music themes. We've got the composer, Danny Elfman, you know, the famous film composer. Uh, we've got Shirley Walker for the Batman animated series. And then we've got Hans Zimmer. And we'll talk about all three because they're they're very, I would say, very different in their compositional approach to writing Batman. Let's talk about Danny Elfman first. I will say Danny Elfman has the nature of Batman correct. And he has the nature of the setting of Batman correct. For those of you, you guys, you guys know who Danny Elfman is. He's he's really that fantastical composer. He really writes for the, the dark, whimsical, kind of fairy, fantastical setting. He he writes with that kind of quirky mystery about him. Of course, you know, you've you've heard him with uh, things like Harry Potter, uh, as well as a number of other films. Um, but they they have to do with a more fictional, fantastical setting. And Batman 89, the, the first film of, of of the Batman series, is is that it's really it's it's got the setting of Gotham right because you know it's a city, you know it's inhabited by all these people that probably would look like you and me and and would act like you and me. And we'd have jobs, you know, kind of like with um Vicky Vale, you know, just as, as a reporter, that that she looked like a reporter, you know, of, of the 80s, you know, kind of like um, you know, Maggie Malone, for instance, from from the the sitcom um the sitcom Growing Pains. That that kind of 80s style reporter, fictional, of course, you know, maybe maybe not fit the actual bill of an actual reporter of the 80s, but but you know, it's 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 people that look more or less like like us in, in the real world, but there is something fantastical, something mysterious, something um, almost magical, kind of like a, a dark magical place with Gotham in, in the setting. Um, you know, the prof and I have talked about it. He's actually talked about it on his videos, I'm sure from, from time to time, where uh, the problem with the Christopher Nolan films is that Gotham looks like Chicago or, or New York or something like that. It just, it looks like an everyday city, but with Batman 89, 
obviously it's a city in, inhabited by human beings, but it's got that dark, fantastical element to it. And Elfman got that right with his music. He he got just kind of that, that whimsical, kind of mysterious, kind of sneaking around idea with his motive for Batman. Um, you know, that that famous da 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 da. And then it kind of resolves da 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 da. You know, it's it's great. Um, and, and so he he got the nature of Batman right. He got the nature of that setting in particular. And um, I, I would say with Elfman, however, while he has Batman correct and in tone, in, in musical tone, uh, he is writing motivically. And, and people I know I come across on social media, they're like, well, what's the difference between a theme and a motive? And I, I've, I've expressed it before a number of times on my streams. Um, you know, theme is a complete musical statement as as a complete sentence would have two or more clauses with a final punctuation. That's a musical theme, whereas a musical gesture is an idea. You know, so maybe this is a rather absurd um, example, but uh, a, a musical gesture. I'm saying this playfully, but a musical gesture is saying I am Batman. That's an actual idea. Yes, it's a statement, but it's it's kind of an idea. Whereas a musical theme would be, I am Batman because no one else can be Batman. I have to be Batman. That that there's length to it. There's there's a bit more concrete sentiment behind that. And you know, obviously, when when um uh, when Batman says I am Batman or I'm Batman, you know, you already know the tone. So I'm using this this example quite loosely, um, but, but it's an idea, you know, Batman, even in the characters in his fictional world is an idea. He, he's kind of a, he's an image. He's kind of a phantom. Whereas actually people who view the world like, like us, we, we, we understand his character. We, we understand a more comprehension, uh, compre we, we comprehend his character a, a lot better seeing it from the outside than the actual characters, uh, inside his fictional world, besides himself, you know, Bruce Wayne himself, and also Alfred, um, and maybe, uh, you know, a couple other main figures in his life. So, um, so, so Danny Elfman, he, he uses a very, very short gesture. Da, 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 da. And then he really expands it. And it's, it's masterfully done. He, he really knows how to create this symphony. It's, it's really a symphony for Batman. And, and I said this on Twitter earlier today, that he he's like what Beethoven did for his famous fifth symphony. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Da -da -da -da. And then branching into more um, cells and structures that, that complete, that, that, that complete a musical idea. So kind of thinking of a, a musical idea versus a, a musical statement. So Danny Elfman has Batman right in tone, in mood, in nature of both the character and the character setting of Gotham City. Um, but he is brief in his musical depiction by using a very short motive and expanding that motive. And motivic writing is really, really common, especially, especially in the Baroque and classical to, to late classical. Uh, periods of Western music. So, so it's, it's, it's perfectly fine as a composer. This is, you know, him being brief is not a dig at what Al Elfman did. Um, it's, it's just, it's, people will call it a theme and it's actually not a theme. Now let's talk about Shirley Walker with, with her music in the Batman animated series and also the, the Mask of the Phantasm. Um, this is a more concrete theme and I actually would say it is a theme. I, and I, I really don't think I can sing it and do it justice because it, it involves so much with harmony. It involves so much with harmonic motion. It's really well done. In fact, actually, oh, I think I, oh, oh, I, I, I thought I had the video up and I would have posted it as a link. But, you know, if you, if you actually just, you know, put on YouTube, um, Shirley Walker, Batman theme. You'll, you'll have the, the video you're looking for. Um, it's, it's about like a five or six minute suite. 
Um, but the first 30 seconds really um, cements her, her theme. And her theme has a complete phrase. In fact, it's, it's, a, re um, it's a repeat of the same phrase with a, a, a tiny bit of closure. It's actually quite unresolved, which really fits Batman's character because he's, he's never really um, resolved as far as life is concerned. He can't stop doing what he's doing. There's the, the, there won't be ever with Batman a, a riding into the sunset because he's, he's Batman. He's going to continue his work until pretty much his heart start, stops beating. So um, I think it, it's, it, it fits. I would just say with Shirley Walker, even though it is a theme, I, I, I wish it had more length. It is powerful. It's so impactful, especially when she adds the, the chorus, especially with um, the film Mask of the Phantasm. Um, but I would say with, um, I would just say to make it more memorable, it, it, it needed more length. And, and I wanted to show you uh, on, on my own example uh, with my music scores, which I will show in a fixed commentary video uh, at some point, um, that, that you do need length. With, with your repetition, you do need length. So her, I believe her theme extends Let's see. Da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Yeah, I think it's a slow four measures, and it can work. It doesn't really have quite the conclusion, uh, but I would say with Batman, for something to be very memorable, I I actually have thirty two measures of 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 a theme for him, and it does repeat. The first eight bars is. Uh, revisited in um, in the third staff, uh, you know, measures uh, 17 to 24, I believe. Uh, so, so there there is repetition, but there's there's extension in, in my theme, and it's 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 nowhere near perfect. Like 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 I would want it. Like I would you know flesh out a lot more as a composer if I uh, you know if if I had was given the opportunity and, and had more time to do that, which I I hope to in the future. But I would say with Batman, Batman needs length. Um, I believe Superman's theme is 16 bars and it's so memorable. And, and there's a lot of um, ideas repeating. Uh, there isn't a lot of harmonic shifting with John Williams' uh, main theme for Superman, but it's still iconic. It's It's got an iconic rhythm. It's got an iconic um, paying homage to, you know, the, the March theme or, or making it very American in, in the way of music and, and musical style. Uh, it sounds like a positive um, version of, of military. It's 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 got the march. It's got the you know the the harmonic structures of of, of Western music. Very simple, very to the point, um, and very optimistic. But it it needs its eight to sixteen bars, and and Batman needs at least at least eight bars. But I would even say sixteen bars for Batman. Uh, so I do love, love Shirley Walker's music. I, I, I do. In fact, it's my favorite. I think out of all the, the musical interpretations of Batman that I've heard, she's my favorite as far as composers. I think she's his best composer. I, I even just, just a tiny, tiny bit above Danny Elfman. One reason why I, I think this, and it, it's not really... Elfman's fault. Uh, I'm not. I'm not faulting him for for this. Uh, th this this is a very instinctive thing he did as a musical composer. But Elfman has a little bit of sneakiness and elusiveness. And and you know, Batman is a very elusive character. He's he he works in stealth and um and 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 gets the job done in very dark places, you know, in the shadows of, of you know, the, the, the recesses of Gotham and, and, and the recesses of that kind of, you know, criminal, violent society. Um, so he gets the job done. He brings people to justice in, in, in that stealth mode. And, you know, he has to be um, an enigma, uh, not, not to play off that, that villain that he has in his world, but he, he is kind of, um, He's like he is a phantom. He he has to be that kind of persona to to make um, the corrupt police and um, uh, the criminals terrified of him. You know, they, and they should be. You know, uh, you know for for what they do. You know, and, and harming the innocents. So he has kind of that sneaky musical nature. However, 
I would say, I would say to, to the to the average listener, it could also work a little bit with the character Joker. At least um oh Jackman? Is it Jackman who plays the Joker? No, Jack Nicholson, uh, who who plays the Joker in 89. Um it, it kind of sounds a little bit, he has a little bit of musical nuances that can sound a little, you know, kind of like a mirror image of Batman um, with, with Joker's chaos. Now, Joker's treatment in 89 is, is very different than, than what we know to be as, as the chaotic, you know, ever living Joker, you know, um, he's, 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 he's meant to be kept alive, you know, pretty much as, you know, for as long as Batman is, is kept alive, you know, symbolically, figuratively. Um, so, so Joker obviously is treated a little bit different because that was, I think that was the first film regarding Batman, not including, of course, the, the campy television show and, and, and all of that. Um, so, so I would say with, with Elfman, it's a little, it, it's, it's, I'll say this carefully. It's got a little bit of nuances that you would expect with something like like Harry Potter. It's got a little bit of dark magic to it. And while it's it's fitting for a setting like that with Gotham and his stealth mode, you know, getting things done, I, I would say Batman needs something a little bit more. And I think that was touched upon with, with Shirley Walker and her compositional approach. She added a lot more tragedy to his music. She added a lot more humanness to to the character Batman you you see at least musically depicted I I see and hear a, a humanness like bringing Bruce Wayne more into into the costume I, I with her music I actually see Bruce Wayne more in the Batman costume than than the figure Batman I know that sounds a little abstract because Batman fans would say, well, no, no, Bruce Wayne, that, that is Batman. They're, they're, they're inseparable, you know, and, and they are, but with her music, I, I, I feel that more, more than I feel with, with Danny Elfman's music. Again, no fault to, to him. Got a little pop up here. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no fault to Elfman, but there, there's something a lot more tragic and human with Shirley Walker's music. The, composer who really drops the ball with Batman, and I know I would upset a lot of people saying this, and I don't care, <laughs> is Hans Zimmer. Now, Hans Zimmer for his Christopher Nolan films, I will say this, it's not bad music. It's not bad music, but it is very generic, meaning his music that he gives for Batman can be used for anything. It can be used for any kind of character. It can be used for the Punisher. It could be used um, for a, a, a detective of an independent film. It could be used for another noir. It could be used um, maybe with added electronics. It could be used for something like cyberpunk. But it, it's generic in the way that it's um, it's barely memorable because there's no theme involved. It's just percussion and strings and it's, it's environmental. It's atmospheric. Hans, Hans Zimmer. Um, I don't know all of his music scores, but besides the Lion King, I really don't hear thematic writing with Hans Zimmer. It's not bad writing, but he's completely atmospheric. It is all about mood and soundscapes. Now you do need mood and you do need soundscapes and you do need experimentation. You need you need a kind of mood for any kind of setting. But when you actually can transfer that music from Batman to a completely different character, you cease writing music that is specific to Batman. So his music, Simmer's music for the Nolan films is not bad per se, but it can be used for anything. It could be used for his Inception video a, a film. It could be used for interstellar even now he he was a lot more experimental with interstellar and from what i heard with the the new dune film he was a lot more experimental with dune and that's great um and it, and it felt like it felt like dune except a couple of things with with his score but i won't talk about that um with batman though it just it batman felt like a detective 
in a Chicago de detective crime sitcom. It would have been fine with that too. It's it's not distinctly Batman. Just like that 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 uh 2017 Wonder Woman theme, that is not Wonder Woman. It's just not. And we'll talk about that. We'll we'll definitely talk about that on another stream, maybe in another fixed video. Um, so so what I had put on um my community tab here on, on YouTube and then also on Twitter, Danny Elfman wrote not a theme for Batman, but it's definitely Batman. It's motivic writing. It's masterful motivic writing. And it's definitely Batman, but it's not a theme. Shirley Walker has a theme and it's definitely Batman. It is certainly Batman. It's probably the best Batman I've heard. Um, I, I would say, I wish she gave it more length. Oh, I wish she gave it more length. It would have been a little bit more memorable if she gave it another four bars or eight bars. Uh, but it's great. It's still good. And then with Hans Zimmer, it's it's just it's just not Batman. <laughs> it's not it's neither thematic or and it's not uh, it's also not Batman. So um, those are the most famous figures for for music for Batman. Um, so I kind of want to talk about what I would do, how I would approach a Batman theme. And of course, you're going to get some more concrete examples in a fixed video, but. Uh, I've got some notes um, and we'll talk about that, but let me go ahead and get into the chat and then, then I'll present a little bit more on the idea of the person and the setting of Batman. Oh yeah, and if you guys correct me on, on composer names or who wrote for what films, I, I do appreciate that because I sometimes I do miss uh, on a live stream uh, that kind of information. So you guys are great about that. Um, all right. Oh, oh, it's Zootopia. Welcome. Nice to see you. Um, Dr. Y, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the best new Batman content is the Lego Batman. I'll have to see. I'm really not, I'm not, I, I don't follow the Lego films at all. So yeah. That's Batman. That's a verb, right? Batman is definitely a noun. Because he's Batman. Um, <laughs> Big Al says, Soundgraver singing the Elfman Batman music. The prof just fainted. <laughs> the first time he did, I think. <laughs> Dr. Y says, a few years ago, there was a guy who came up with lyrics to different movie themes. Most of them were satire parodies, except for the Danny Elfman Batman. So they weren't, it wasn't satirical for that one. Can I compose a theme for this chat? Hey, that'd be an interesting idea. Um, I, I would prefer to compose my own themes for my own chats, but that's, a, that's an interesting idea. Actually, the, the prof um, has a good friend um, who, who did music, all old, old, old good stuff for, for his, um, for his videos and his uh, live streams when, you know, the, the, the few times he can um, live stream. It was great, um, especially uh, his trailer. His uh, I think his trailer video is um, "Consume Stories Responsibly," and um, there was uh, uh, um, our our friend Steve Cruz. I know he he doesn't come on my chat anymore. <laughs> He's probably busy. Probably has work. Uh, but he he composed. Uh, it, it was really. It is kind of the prof's theme. I actually think the prof's theme is that that xylophone jazz music. I just love it. It's just, because actually the, 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 that's the first time I heard of the prof and, and his, his videos. And I always associate, I always associate those videos with that, that kind of jazz theme coming in. Um, Photos uh, says uh, it will sound baroque, but all the instruments will be replaced by notification sounds. Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That's uh, is that is that how you spell the villain's name? I didn't know that. I thought it was just the word enigma. Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't grow up with the comics, so um, I really just any knowledge I have of Batman is just from, you know, observing what true fans of Batman have, have said of him. And I just really just, oh, it, it's just, he's such an inspiring character. It's just great. Oh, 
Oh, uh, photos. I think, I think so. No, actually, I think, I think the channel I'm thinking of is Sideways. Has anyone here seen Listening In's video on Elfin's music for the first Spider-Man movie? That, that probably would be really good to listen to. I, I, I've, I've come across uh, those videos before, and I, and I, I do remember it being very good. All right, uh, we'll, we'll do a couple more, um, a minute or two with chat, and then we'll get into what goes into a Batman theme. Um, it's rather brilliant that it has separate musical ideas for Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Batman needed that, yeah. Yep, he does. Da, 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 dun, dun. Uh, um, Foto says, I have been highly critical of Zimmer in the past, especially his recent output. Ironically, I took part in a Zimmer, Zimmer remix context once and lost. <laughs> Is that why you're critical? No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, that, that's thematic. That works. Yeah, that I, I forgot about that. Uh, James Newton Howard was the one who wrote some good uh, secondary music for Nolan film, uh, the Nolan films, but he chose to leave in the third one. Smart guy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about it. <clears throat> so, so musically speaking, what goes into a Batman theme? What goes into a great Batman theme? So, if you're a composer, let's say you've been given the task to musically interpret uh, a piece of Batman, uh, like like an artwork, like like an art piece, whether film or a play, uh, well, in a, in a musical respect, it would be a musical. Um, you know, uh, let, let's say you were tasked, even after all these in interpretations, or maybe you're the first composer, you know, in, in, a, in the hypothetical world, maybe you're the first composer to, to write a music theme for Batman. There, there are ways to approach this, and and I would I would hope for for composers uh, that that this kind of approach would help you compose for any kind of character or any kind of environment, whether in a film or in a video game. But but to understand the nature of musical composition, especially for the visual medium, especially for film especially for film. So musically speaking, what goes into a Batman theme? Well, we first have to ask, you're given this task, hey, I've got to compose music for this character, this iconic character, Batman. Well, the first thing you have to ask is who is Batman? And culture, by and large, throughout his history in the comics and in uh, the visual media, Culturally speaking, we're mostly aware, you know, most most of culture understands Batman to be the Dark Knight, whether that's an earned title or uh, the right title to use, uh, wh whether it's the right title or not. Uh, the Dark Knight is, I would say, a good depiction, is, is a good first place to start, because the Dark Knight, well, if you if you if you look at the word knight that that is the hero that is the guardian that is that that is the the keeper of the peace you know that is the defender and when you input dark you know in front of it that that's that signifies tragedy that that signifies um solemnity some some seriousness behind it so so the dark knight for whatever your opinion of of the title is culture by and large sees Batman as the dark knight, you know, the dark defender. And this depicts noble, tragic heroism. He is noble as, as a knight is noble. You, you can't have someone who betrays. You can't have someone who does not demonstrate virtue. You can't have a person like that be a knight. A knight as, as we, we have understood knights to be for centuries, someone who demonstrates, who performs heroism, who is a noble person. So the Dark Knight, I would say that that's the title for Batman. That is the noble, tragic heroism of his character, of his life. 
So we have to see that and, 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 and extend that. We have to expand from that. And, and we have to go into his setting. So we'll talk about the setting, actually, of the, of the character himself. Why is he tragic? Well, obviously, it's it's with his origin story, him witnessing as as a kid the murder of his parents, and and his parents were subject to the the, the lawless system of of bureaucrats of uh, corrupt police enforcement uh, of of mobsters of of gang members of 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 just violence you know of just of just crime and um you know crime that had just been embedded in in the city of Gotham because of 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 the the higher ups not not doing their work or or being corrupt about their work you know the the entrance of commissioner gordon really cleans things up and 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 I love I love batman as that detective archetype where he He'll he'll help the police, but he'll also work outside the police. Like he's not he's not working for the police. He he's doing his own thing, but he's doing what the police should do, and that is bringing people to justice when the politicians and the leaders and, and the police won't do it themselves. He will take matters in his own hands, whether the police like it or not. So he, because of his tragedy does not want others to face that same experience or a similar experience. He does not want to see the tragedy of the innocents. You know, it, it's very it's very important that it had to happen when Bruce was a boy because that's the time of innocence. And I, I love the character of Batman very, very much because he has, he has, wealth affluence and a platform and and with wealth he 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 could have had the power to play a um a a, a malicious deed and demonstration against criminals he he could have been brutal he could have been an anti-hero he had he had every opportunity and even some people would say he he would be justified. I wouldn't say he would be justified in doing so because of his parents, you know, his, his parents' death. I wouldn't say he would be justified in in the um, in seeking vengeance. But that's that's kind of a human instinct. Uh, that that's kind of a human thing you have to control and 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 quell if if you want to demonstrate virtue. So he has, you, you know, he has the the property, the affluence the influence, the wealth. He has anything he could ever possibly want to, to seek vengeance and destruction upon the, the people who had wronged him or, or even the system on, on, on a whole. But he doesn't. He also has wealth to be decadent and, and, and live a life of vice because of his tragedy. You know, a lot of tragic characters go on to you know, demonstrate vice and, and live a life of luxury and decadence. And, and, and I hear people and it doesn't make sense, but I hear people kind of complain, well, Oh, Batman, he's, he's, you know, he has all this, you know, wealth about him. And I was like, that makes him even cooler because rather than live in a life of luxury, he actually goes out and defends the, the innocent and 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 in in seeing the the Arkham Origins gameplay, it's like, like he, he didn't have to do that on Christmas Eve. <laughs> he didn't have to go out in the cold, and in in the slums of of the, of the city and and beat thugs and 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 help protect people and, um, you know, go after these assassins. He has a safe house. He no one knows where his back cave is. You know, besides Alfred, he could have just been in hiding. That that would be almost like a. That's an instinctive thing to do. Like, okay, I've got eight assassins after me. I'm, I'm just going to hide during Christmas Eve. But he doesn't because he knows those people would kill to get information or hurt or maim to get information on Batman and, and his whereabouts. So he, he, he goes after them. He, I mean, that's so cool. And the bitter cold, he goes after them. But he has all the wealth to, to do the exact opposite. That, that's why I think it makes him even nobler as a character that he has this wealth. And I know people, there's a lot of people who have like anti-wealth sentiments. It's like, well, that actually, 
I would say bolsters his virtue and, and, and his light side, so to speak, because he, he could he could run from all of this. He can live in a lap of luxury and, and all of this this vice, but he 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 doesn't. He chooses to pursue justice even when it's hard, even when he gets beaten up and and, and kicked around and 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 all of that. So so that's that's the setting of the, the actual character himself. And then you go into the setting of, of the city of Gotham and, and what that's like. Now, Gotham, obviously the name, you know, the first thing you think of when you even hear the name Gotham for the first time is, is Gothic, is, is that kind of dark fantasy element. It goes back to the, the medieval architecture that survives all the way to, I think, early Baroque, maybe maybe even to the, the end of Baroque, which is in the mid uh, 18th century, getting into the 1750s. And so that's that's something for a composer to consider, is that the, the city of Gotham is depicted as dark, as gothic, as, um, I would I would say Baroque, Baroque is really known for ornamentation. So you, you could say that that's not really Gotham to me. I, I don't see like lavishness. I see dilapidation, maybe the dilapidation of lavishness and, and ornamentation and architecture and buildings and all of that. But, you know, like the like the top politicians and, and the corrupt police, um, you know, the, the, the top dogs of the, of the police force. Yeah, they could probably live in decadence, like like the, the character of the penguin. You know, he lives a, a life of major crime and networking, but he's also quite influential and has affluence. Um, he's, he's got kind of that posh vanity about him. Uh, I think in the game it's depicted where he's wearing like kind of a, a long fur, you know, so, so there, there is that, um, lavishness about it. So, so Baroque ornamentation, um, things like a lot of fluid writing and, and melodic writing, uh, melodic lines just going all over the place, uh, this, that sense of ornamentation. Um, so as a composer, you consider that as well. You consider the noble, tragic heroism of the character, and you also consider the setting. You know, Gotham is very much integral to Batman's life and experience. Like, Gotham and Batman are just, it, it, it is, they are kind of a mirror image, the, the place and the person. Now, I would say, um, with, with writing a superhero theme, you, you have to consider other superheroes, you know, uh, that have a relationship with Batman. And I think the, the biggest one, of course, is, is Superman. Now, I, I would say people could fall into the temptation of saying, well, Batman is the opposite of Superman. You know, um, Superman is is optimistic. He's light. He he works in, 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 well, he can work in dark places, but he is, he's always most, um, you know he's beautified. He's 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 depicted flying through the blue skies. You know he he is that figure of optimism and hope. And um, you know the prof had a really great video. And actually, prof, you can you can put it in in, in the chat because it's this wonderful video. But you you had written a a blog, I believe, uh, some some time ago, um, based on um an artwork where it's just this beautiful artwork where um Superman and Batman are are standing next to each other so, so somewhat uh, at a, at a diff different angle but the 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 sun is is beaming you know through superman as as he's standing tall and proud and then the the light of the 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 searchlight is is beaming through batman um with with kind of the gargoyles so i think um superman i think in this art piece he's standing on a, a statue or a figure of like a golden eagle and batman is on the gargoyle, you know, that kind of old Gothic art. And, and th they're not opposite to one another. Rather, they are, Batman is rather the inverse where he is the virtue of Superman, but rather working in the day, he works in stealth in, in the slums at night. He, he goes to the dark corners and brings hope that way. So he is he is that same nature of Superman. He just works in a in the this this a very different setting. Metropolis, I would say, is the opposite to Gotham. 
but the two guardians of the two places are not the opposite. They would be really the inverse. Like I'm, I'm the day, I'm the night, but we still are joined together. You know, it's, it's kind of like the rotation of the the world, you know, we have our sun and we have our moon. We have our daylight. We have our night time, uh, the, the light of, of night, whether it's the moon or the stars. And, and, and both are beautiful in their own way. So Batman displays the virtue, but, but in a, in a night setting, in a dark setting, and, in, and also in an ugly setting. He himself is not ugly. He himself is not malicious, but his setting is. And the composer would have to consider that. The composer would have to consider, well, Superman is the daylight optimism. He is the daylight version of hope. So obviously, John Williams chose Superman's theme to be in major, and it would have to be in major. Hans Zimmer, with his Superman theme, is not major. It's not Superman at all, but it's not major. <laughs> um, John Williams writes it in, I believe, the key of C. That is that is a very regal, royal key. It the key of C is is meant for the royal processions, that the royal ceremony. It is military. It's it's a very much a military key. It's it's a march like. It's it's going to um, a war with with optimism that you are fighting for the good, and that that's actually what causes it to be quite American. That 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 culture of march music, um, the culture of you know. Even a little bit of um, Americana, I'd say not Americana, but the, the music of John Philip Sousa with, with his, you know, um, very, very famous March music that you would hear, you know, at a, a you know, at a bazaar, you like an American bazaar, you know, on July 4th. That, that's very much Superman. He is, he is major, um, major versus minor. Major is a, a very bright sound versus dark sound with minor Ma major is a very open sound with the major third which is a, which is a um a, a greater spacing a more open spacing the major third is a more open spacing to a minor third which is a more closed spacing the closer the spacing between the two intervals the two notes the the the, the closer dissonance it becomes so with superman you really can't you, you do have dissonance with his theme. I'm not saying it, he's void of dissonance and, and his dissonance is very important. I did talk about the Superman theme and I do talk about a little bit of dissonance in, in that video. Um, but uh, but it's very much wholesome. It's very much full of hope. It's it's very much full of this is this is being American. This is being virtuous and, and, and patriotic and, and we want to defend the American way. That's all over John Williams' Superman theme and it's fantastic. Batman has to have his theme in minor. Why? He he himself is a virtuous character, just like Superman, but he has a very tragic past. And he uses that tragedy as fuel to prevent others from having the same or similar tragedy. So he's still noble as a character, but he has to have the tragic element. And minor, the key of minor, any minor key, the mode, the minor mode, any kind of minor mode, depicts tragedy much better than major. It it, it it has a lot more room and a lot more flexibility with dissonance. And I'll talk about it on my fixed video uh, pretty soon. Um, but minor, the, the minor key has has chords, has a chord progression that is a lot, a lot more flexible to go between dissonance, dissonant intervals, and also uh, going back and forth between minor and major chords where you have a lot more room. And I think with Batman, it has to be harmonically thicker than with Superman. It has to have much more density. It has to have um, a harmonically dense, a harmonically dense kind of crunched, kind of yearning feel than, than even with Superman. It's not to say Superman is all hearts and flowers. No, he goes through a lot too. And and you guys, especially with you who have read the classic Golden Age and Silver Age of um, of Superman, rather, yeah, he goes through a lot. He goes through a lot. Um, but the environment is different. The environment is different. So if you're a composer for Batman, you have to compose with these ideas in mind. How is he the same as Superman? But how is he different? So. That's that's another thing to consider when composing a theme for Batman.
And finally, talking about Gotham, Gothic, Gothic architecture that survived into the 16 and 1700s. Well, that was the time in, in Western culture and Western history, Western music, where, where Baroque flourished from early Baroque all the way to Bach's death date, which was in 1750. So with John, John, with Johann Sebastian Bach, <laughs> um, you really get into things like figured bass, four-part choral, choral writing, and a lot of tension and release, a lot of moving between consonants and dissonance. And I have this with, with the theme I'm thinking of for composing for Batman. But we have to talk about some elements of Baroque, and this is a little bit easier to depict with actual music in front of you. So I actually will go over this in my upcoming video. But elements of Baroque, um, I just want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, the, the first thing is suspension. Uh, suspension in music is, is de it is best depicted when you have notes sustaining over motion that is progressing while one note is sustaining. And, and I like that idea for Batman for two reasons. One, it shows it, it shows a yearning, like a, a an un um an unresolved feeling that that this this is his fate. This is his work he has to do until his last breath. And there's there's a there's a yearning. He 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 it was really well depicted in the Mask of the Phantasm with his yearning to go back to his parents, whether the physical grave site of his parents or, or go back to living, you know, living a life as if his parents were still alive. Like what, what would life be like it, as an adult if his parents were still alive? So there's that yearning to go back to his parents, you know, figuratively and also locationally with, with his parents' actual gravesite. And, um, and, and suspension, chordal suspension with, with notes just kind of hanging in, in stasis while there's other harmonic motion and other musical motion going on is very key in Baroque, especially with Bach. And it would be perfect for Batman. And you're going to see that later. <laughs> um, the next thing is diminished chords. And diminished chords in the minor key trajectory is basically, well, what does is, what is diminished sound like to you? Well, the word diminutive, the word, you know, something small and compact, very closely spaced. Diminished chords in the minor mode in, in, in traditional Western music are, 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 are notes that are so closely spaced. It causes, it causes angst. It causes tension that begs to be resolved that begs to be resolved. And um, there's there's the minor two diminished chord, there's the minor um, seven diminished chord. Um, and uh, you'll you'll see that <laughs> in, in another video. Um, and, and these these diminished chords, actually, excuse me, let me let me correct myself. Uh, the, the diminished seven chord is actually in the major key. It's not in the minor key. The the, ma the major seven uh, is if you're not including the leading tone is, is, is in the minor. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. If you're not including the leading tone, it is, uh, it, it's a major seven. Um, but, but that's not to say you can't use other diminished chords, um, working with the minor key, but, um, diminished chords is, is, is a sense of, um, if you want to put it poetically, it's a sense of suffocation. It, it's, it's a sense of a closed, closed space. It's almost, if I want to be so graphic, it's like claustrophobic. You you do feel trapped. You want a sense of release. And what diminished chords do motionally, uh, not not emotionally. I I, I meant, to, meant to say, um, speaking in motion, diminished chords actually resolve to other minor chords in the minor setting. Um, and and they can de depending on where the bass line is going or where the harmonic line is going. It actually it actually can uh, deceive the listener and, and go into like a, a major chord release, and it, and it can sound nice. But the idea of diminished chords is 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 angst and 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 clo closely like like if if a, if a chord were to be a hand motion, it'd be like a clenched fist. Um, so there there are 
a lot of opportunities to include diminished chords in the minor setting. And this needs to be implemented in Batman's music, no matter who you are or uh, what what you compose uh, with um, in, in terms of what what Batman you're composing for. And I would say hopefully you're you're composing for the iconic Batman. Um, so so I talked about suspension and notes hanging in stasis while there's other harmonic motion going on and diminished chords. And it's it's very hard to talk about chords and music theory with not having anything in front of you. But if I, if I could talk about it poetically and paint a picture, that, that's what I mean by diminished chords. Um, another very important element in Baroque music is the Picardy Third. This was very, very common, especially in organ music and, and keyboard music of, of the Bach family. Um, the Picardy Third, uh, <laughs> I realize in my notes, it says Picard. I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not talking about Star Trek, uh, Picardy, <laughs> um, but that, that's how you spell Picardy. It's, it's like the name Picard with a Y at the end. Uh, the Picardy chord is, is a wonderful chord, a, a wonderful element in, in Baroque music where it is the final chord. It's, 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 it's the chord that resolves everything. It's, it's the final, you know, death knell <laughs> or death knell, um, bell toll. It's, it's the last chord of the piece, not just the last chord of a statement or a section, but it's the last chord of the piece. Usually. I, I don't think, I don't remember hearing a Picardy third anywhere inside the music. It's, it's the conclusion of the music. And what a Picardy third is, is in the minor, it's, it's found in minor. Uh, usually you end on a minor tonic. So uh, D minor, for instance, has D, F, A, da, da, da. And that's, that's your minor chord. And the Picardy raises the third to make it a major chord. Da, da, da. It adds the final hope. It, adds, it just adds a very good spiritual release. Um, after listening to something that is solemn or sad or tragic. And I was thinking about including that with Batman's theme because um, I have I have two reasons for doing this. Um, the first reason is Batman is a spiritual figure. Symbolically, he's a spiritual figure. He He looks to the higher order of things, things like virtue, things like justice, even when life dealt with him cruelly concerning the murder of his parents and and also also just just the the uh life as being batman you know he he it's it's not just gangsters and mobsters and 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 crime syndicates he he works he, he works against super villains um and and he's he's beaten down like i i never read the comic um but i know there's a pivotal moment in batman's um life where where bane breaks his back I, I have a thing with broken bones, man. I, I almost like this. This sounds a little okay. This sounds a little strange, but I, I I don't. I just can't do torture, especially with when it comes to broken bones. Like I would rather like just be cut, you know, <laughs> than than be be broken and still living. It, it, I know that's a weird thing. Maybe not. Maybe maybe I would just pray for a huge threshold um, of you know, um, and tolerance of, of pain, but there's something about the breaking of a body that just, oh, just, you know, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. But I know that that's, that's a, a story in, in Batman's life. And so he, not only is he um, been unfairly dealt with, uh, you know, as far as life with, with the murder of his parents, but he's, he, he's, he's been dealt with blow after blow as, as, as Batman, as, as the figure Batman. Um, but he he keeps pursuing. And so when you keep going, th there is a higher order of things. And so I think to to go from a minor chord as as a conclusion to a major chord, da da da. I can only speak uh, sing one note at a time. But you know, that's that's a that's a lower, darker feel. Da 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 versus da da da. You, you'd be able to hear it a little bit better as a chord instead of singing it separately. But I think a 
Picardy third, raising it from the, the closed, closely spaced minor third to a more open space major third light, like I was talking about with Superman. I think that's perfect for Batman. The other reason I, I was thinking about is like, I was thinking about actually doing my own themes for Batman, Wonder Woman, and even Superman, you know, for like a future pet project or whatever. And um, I have in mind for Batman to uh, to write in um, his, his theme in D minor. And if I switched it over to D major, well, that's the dominant fifth of G minor which I would use for Wonder Woman's theme. She would be a minor theme as well, but very full of hope and optimism with, with, um, with, with her, with her nature. Um, so I think the Picardy third, it, a very common Baroque element, maybe not common, common, but it, it's, it's quite common, <laughs> um, would be perfect for someone like Batman. And lastly, um, uh, would a, a very common thing that's just so beautiful in early Baroque. Um, actually, I, I meant to get a Baroque book, um, a, a violin duo book that I have um, that includes some th this element in, in some of their the very early simple Baroque music. Um, the time of Jeremiah Clark. Um, oh, there's another one too. I can't remember his name. There are early Baroque composers that are not as well known, but I wish they were because they just really write beautiful music. And that is the flat two chord. And, um, you know, if I, if I were to give you the natural minor scale, I'll just do D minor. Um, the, the, the two chord, you know, the second degree D E well, E would be lowered to an E flat. Da, 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 da. And it really brings it down in a very solemn but very, very beautiful way. And if you actually put the third in the bass, it, it, it's also called a Neapolitan six chord. Uh, that's actually introduced a little bit more in Beethoven's time, if, if I have that correct. But the flat two chord on its own is a very beautiful, very beautiful element of Baroque, uh, early Baroque, actually. Maybe even, um, you know, it actually might have been introduced in the, in the Renaissance. It, it, yeah, actually, I want to put it past it to have been introduced in the Renaissance, but very common in early Baroque. And I would definitely include that with Batman. In fact, I did include it with, with, with a chord that you will see in another video. In another upcoming video. So I wanted to talk about the elements of Baroque too. So that, that's a lot to take in as a composer, but I hope that gives composers a an idea of really how to compose music. You know, what ideas should, should cement this depiction of a character or a setting or a world, you know, a, a, an entire planet, you know, um, a, a, an idea. What, maybe it's, maybe it's a love story, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, uh, a hero's journey. Maybe it's a tragedy, but 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 that's how composers should really think when they're given the task of writing for, especially a character of a visual medium like film. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Some some ideas for you composers out there, and I would just say have fun composing original themes for Batman. <laughs> Let's get into the chat. All right. So lots to talk about, right? All right. Um, see, I see some some obscure things in the chat, but uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. Oh, Ace is back. Uh, Ace is saying, when did Batman even get a, a, a motif in the Snyder flicks? I don't know the score of any of the Snyder films. Besides the Wonder Woman theme, which is not a theme for her at all. I'll actually definitely talk about um, Wonder Woman and, and I think how... Um, uh, Hans Zimmer and oh, who's who's uh, oh, who, uh, what's his name? Junkie XL, uh, that the 
brutality, the brutalizing of, of music for Wonder Woman. That's, that's just not her theme at all. But that's for another stream. Uh, Photo says, if I was asked to compose for anything Batman, my hair would turn gray from anxiety. I don't know. I would I would take it in a heartbeat. I would I would have so much fun. I'd have so much fun if if I was given the task of writing Batman. Actually, I oh junkie XL, there you go. Um uh actually I will I I just for fun, I would like to compose a theme for Batman. Um I I even with Shirley Walker, I just feel like Batman has not had a theme. Now I'm actually not talking about the Arkham Origins soundtrack because I meant to actually check that out before my stream. I, I honestly, guys, I don't even know who wrote wrote it because um, I didn't do my research. Um, the music when it loads up, when when it's starting to load up your saved game, it's close, but I will say it kind of sounds a little bit. Avengers, just a little bit. And it's because of chord progression. Yeah. It's because of the chord progression. I'll say this with, with my with my samples that I wanted to show you tonight. Um I started with harmony. I started with a Baroque style harmony. I didn't get into four-part writing, but but it's chords with a with a bass line, a, a, a general bass line, and then a melody on top uh, in, in another document. And um I had to start with melody with Batman, or, or harmony rather. I had to start with harmony with Batman because it had to be Baroque. It had to have that that progression and then I had to write the melody. It, the, the melody had to adhere to what was going on in the harmony. If I started with melody first with Batman, I would be very generic and it would sound like Marvel. Nothing against Marvel, I, I do enjoy I do, I do enjoy the music of Marvel, but every every Marvel character has has a different theme. But it kind of sounds, it just has a, it has a Marvel package. It, yeah, that's that's another that's another video. Um, now I have the Marvel theme stuck in my head. <laughs> um, now I gotta go back to Batman. It just sounds the same. It, not in a bad way, but it does it does have a Marvel feel. And I, I think the, the game, actually in the gameplay itself, the, the music in the actual Arkham Origins gameplay is definitely Batman. It's not really thematic, but you don't need a thematic composition with gameplay because you're kind of in the zone. You just need that atmosphere. Actually, you know what? To be fair, Hans Zimmer, Hans Zimmer would be perfect for game music. He really would be perfect for game music. I'm not saying that game music should not have themes. I, I I do think there should be thematic writing for game music. Mario, Final Fantasy, come on. Donkey Kong, you have to have themes for your game music. But it works better. The, the atmosphere kind of environmental music that Hans Zimmer is in, it works better for that medium, for gameplay, than it does for the film. Oh, bye, Ace. <laughs> See ya. Photo says, um, Junkie XL is barely a composer. I, I'm not familiar with his music besides besides that terrible Wonder Woman theme. Um, Elfman did sneak in his Batman theme. Oh, and the Joss Whedon cut. Interesting. Interesting. He would have had to. He would have had to, to to make that work. Yeah, I, I but I don't, besides the Wonder Woman, whatever that was, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the music at all. I'm not that curious to know. But actually, I'll I'll talk about it because this is a music channel and we gotta talk about stuff like that. Batman is a detective, the world's greatest detective, even. Batman is a crusader. Excuse me. To to right the wrong in a right way. <laughs> All right. Um I've seen someone like, let's see. Oh, let me, uh, oh yeah. No, no gaming spoilers. Cause I, I, I haven't seen all of it. Ah, yeah. So 
No spoilers. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, put a user in timeout because there, there looked like a random spam on my chat. All right. So uh, no spoilers, guys. Oh, um, oh, dude, like, okay, so I, I feel like there is. So remember how I was saying, like, Ray Bradbury? I, I just associate him with October because his literature is just all about October and, and the festive season of um, All Hallows' Eve. Um, and it could be the game, Arkham Origins, but I do feel Batman is is related to Christmas. And and there's there, there's Christmas themes with the animated series, um, with with him and Robin, probably some some that I haven't seen um, by himself. Um, but I do associate Batman with Christmas, and actually that's what kind of want why I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to actually talk about this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my 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 fixed uh, video, my my commentary video, my separate video, um, uh, before hopefully before Christmas, was de but definitely before New Year's, because I, I just need a hero theme. I need to do a hero theme series. I, I've got um, Superman and He-Man. Uh, so I'll put, I'll put um, elements of this, you know, with Batman uh, for my, my hero theme series. I can't analyze a Batman theme score because I just, I, I want to actually compose a full length music theme. So I'm actually going to do the composing and, and, and actually do some analysis with that. But yeah, Dr. Y, I, 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 I connect him mentally. Just it's in my psyche that Batman is related to Christmas. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not, I'm going to be very fair to Hans Zimmer, but I will speculate his music with analysis, with, with objective musical analysis. Um, I would say that, that Zimmer is the world's biggest hack, but then I remembered that Junkie XL exists. Now, I'm not against Zimmer's music. Um, I just wish he didn't get all the gigs. <laughs> There, there are other composers out there that could do, like, they, they could do work. There, there was, um, there was this, there was another composer who wrote for Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and I think that was more him than Hans Zimmer. Oh, looks like I have low connection. Hopefully, I'm not freezing up. Um, actually, a, a composer I really did appreciate, and unfortunately, he passed a few. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. He he passed away like at 48 years old. He he had a whole life, a whole career ahead of him, and that was Johann Johansson. Um, I I really really liked what I had heard with his film The Arrival. He had a lot of potential, and I, I know he's he's known for other things too, but I, I remember him specifically for that. Um, let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't know about this. Uh, let, let me see. Uh, for asking so many times, I don't know if you've asked a lot of times, but it's not like going to, oh, cover, um, Nick Arundel's, is that how you say, it? uh, work. He actually fixed the Zimmer theme in Arkham City. He's a Swiss army knife composer. Let me, yeah, I, I need to write this down and, 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 and go back to this. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll check him out. See, see what. What is good with that? Oh yes, this must be the the video of um, uh, uh the professor's video that I'm talking about. Um, kind of want to check it out myself. I know, but I, I trust you, Prof. You, you know what I'm talking about. I, I loved that video. That was that's actually probably one of my favorite videos. Um, and I was really inspired. I was really really inspired by Batman's character because of that. And and the Prof goes into detail just. That, that canon, that story, what, what makes Batman so inspirational. Um, I just emailed you a guest post of mine um, on a friend's blog where I rant about, oh, Zimmer's music, especially Man of Steel. Actually, I do, um, thanks, I'll, I'll check that out. Um, I do, I do want to talk about that Man of Steel theme. 
because just like with with the the Snyder Wonder Woman, it, it's not it's not. It's not Superman. It's not Wonder Woman because it can be used for everything. I, I have to make this known. I have to make this said because I, I I see a lot of comments where I I I I see two I see two main things. I see Hans Zimmer being compared to John Williams. They are not the same. They as far as compositional approach, as far as education, as far as history. They are not the same. They are two very, very, very different composers. And I need to make that distinction. The second thing is people think atmospheric music. And I, don't get me wrong. I love atmospheric music because I'm an electronic music composer. I love that stuff. Love it. But they think that atmospheric music can be a theme for something. If it does not convey distinctly an idea a person or a place it's not a theme and, and i i know that's bold you know i'm like stamping my authority on that but if you can make man of steel for instance you can make that sound like anything you can make that sound like the the normandy invasion you can make that sound like some social conflict in the U ukraine you know you can make, and now it does, okay, I'll be fair. It does sound like a superhero theme. It, it Well, I, I'm going to be not so fair. It does sound like it should belong in the superhero world, but it can sound like an armada to something. It could sound like a spaceship flight. It could sound like transporting from one planet to another. You know, it could, it could sound like something cool and fantastical, but it's not distinctly Superman. It's not distinctly Superman. That Wonder Woman junky thing, junky XL thing, um, that that's not Wonder Woman. I hear I've used this example before, but I hear I hear wildebeest. I I hear a stampede of cattle, or wildebeest. I I, I see I see jackals on the run, or or some sort of wildlife. I see I see fantastical creatures, or I see an avalanche. I see a mystical dust storm. I, I see, I can see anything, but not Wonder Woman. And that's the thing is, even if I could see Wonder Woman in that, whatever that music is, it, it's still not good enough. You have to make it distinctly Wonder Woman. And this is really, really, really important. And we'll talk about it. I'm going to actually, this will probably be more my content getting into the next year because it's so important. Yeah, Sousa and Sousaphone. It is true. It is true. No, I actually think he, didn't he design? I thought he patented off that instrument too, but even if he didn't, even if he didn't design that instrument, he, he deserves that instrument. And the Sousaphone is being, it, it's played for marching bands. I mean, it's really not used in a wind ensemble. It's not used in an orchestra. It's, it's specifically American march music. So... Um, <laughs> and, and Fotis getting on Zimmer. Yeah, we'll we'll go team Ghost Planet go. We'll 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 try to keep reminding the world that Batman is a detective. I love I love the detective work in Arkham Origins. It's like it's so fascinating, and I think I appreciate that more after seeing the film noir rewatches that we did last year. I just I love it. Love it. Um, all right. You know what, Dr. Y? I feel like I've seen this video. I think Nostalgia Critic brought up the differences between the themes in, the, in his Man of Steel review. I think it was one of his Batman Superman reviews. There's also another guy called Sideways. And I, I, judging from what I've seen in his videos, he, he is a fan of the 79 Superman and he's a fan of John Williams. And, um, he is not a fan of Batman versus Superman. <laughs> like he was showing different pictures of iterations of Superman. And then when it showed, um, uh, Ben Affleck in his suit, he, he would say, um, Christopher Reeve, 79. Um, I, and I think he talked about the others too. Okay. 
I can't remember who did the voice acting for the animated series, but when it showed uh, Ben Affleck, he didn't say anything. He just went, <laughs> So I don't think he's a fan of the Snyderverse. Um... Oh, I don't know anything about the controversy of his channel, though. All right. No spoilers. Um, Arundel Aska, I hope I'm saying his last name right. Um, uh, Arundel, Arundel asked the orchestra to play all the notes from his Batman theme all at once and became the basis for his dissonant music for Scarecrow. Perfect. Oh, see, that's what that's what that's what capable composers do. Now, now, if he said that and he hated the output, then I wouldn't say he should feel like he's obligated to do that for Scarecrow. But if he liked it, if it worked, then that's that's perfect. Oh, Killer Croc scene, man. I, I probably won't even play that game just for that scene. And when I was watching you do that, you, you, were, you were fighting, you were fighting him and, and all the all at the same time. He's like, this, you're like, what, what do you say? He's like, this is so creepy. <laughs> See, Batman, again, like he does that when he could actually just live a life of, he could just be Bruce Wayne and just live a life of, philanthropy and, and altruism but his altruism is Batman kicking and beating up Killer Croc and he is so disturbing and like I'm not it might be because I'm a woman and I don't have that kind of energy where I feel like I could like handle a, a, an ugly croc face and like try to like poke his eyes or whatever like that I guess if I was desperate to not die um, I, there, there's something about a masculine energy, like that Batman Arkham origin. I, I'm going to say, and I know women probably play the game. I'm not saying women can't, but there's, there's an, there's a masculine energy behind that game. There, it's so masculine. It's like, I, I've said this before, but in, in film and, and in, in literature too, but, um, especially in film, one of my favorite, favorite things to see in film is to, men, usually grown men, masculine, not, not boys, not people in a schoolyard fight or whatever, but two men, two male characters, just duking it out like a hero and a villain. I love it. Love it. Uh, it's, it's, it's like my favorite thing in the world as far as, um, uh, seeing that in film. And, and I think that's why I like seeing, um, the, 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 the Batman game, because it's like, yeah, I, I can imagine like my grandparents, especially my grandmother, say, "Oh, that's so violent," and 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 you know, I'm you know, I'm Christian, and I I can understand that, but like the Christian story, the the mythology, and and I say that mythology as far as the the hero story uh, concerning Christ is is brutal, it's violent, and and I think um, especially Christian women, um, w while I think there needs to be modesty and cleanliness and holiness regarding my conduct of life as a Christian woman, I don't shy away from something like, like, like a, a masculine figure, like, like Batman, just, you know, just duking it out with, with the thugs and, and the, the supervillains. Now I don't like gore. I don't like blood. Um, I, but I don't like gratuitous gore. I, I don't think it, there's any need for me to see that. Um, even though it, it suits a lot, a lot of other people. Um, but I do just love the energy of that game. It's, it's, it's just so fun to watch. I don't think I would play it myself. I'm, I'm fine with just Final Fantasy <laughs> and, and casting, you know, white magic or, or summons or whatever. No, yeah, good. No spoilers. Good, good. Prof, prof, uh, he, he uh, said it in time. Okay, so the in the Arkham franchise is Arkham City. The track is called It's Initiation Time. Yeah, you know, because I'm working with Batman, like we're talking about Batman, I actually, I'll, I'll, I'll go to those references because, um, no, actually, wait a second, wait a second. Um, what's, what's his full name again? Um... Okay, um, R. Rendell, oh, R. Arkham. 
Maybe that's the composer. Is that, is that the composer for all the games? Um, who composed it? <laughs> um, oh, Nick. Nick Arndell. I hope... Oh, he... Oh, he did the whole series, it looks like. If, if I have that correct. Okay. Yes, I will be fair. I need, I need to talk about... I need to talk about him and his music. Uh, it looks like Christopher Drake did... Arkham Origins, and then um, the oh, I'll, I'll check this out later. The Arkham series, the Arkham series. Um, oh, it doesn't what it doesn't have the name of the composer there? Music. Um, okay, the first two games were composed oh by Nick Arndell and Ron Fish. Origins was composed by Christopher Drake. I had heard, yeah, I, I think the prof mentioned him. Um, and then um, Arkham Knight being composed by Arndell and Dave, David Buckley. Okay, I'll check them out. I, I think you know since I since I gave them a um, uh, since I gave them you know since I gave the three figures of the the film and the animated series you know Elfman, Walker, and Zimmer. It, it's only fair that I I talk about the the games as well. All right, um, we'll probably wrap it up in a few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Baroque really fits with the gothic production design in the Burton films. The production design, uh, the production designer blended many archetypal, um, architectural uh, designs in order to make Gotham look as ugly as possible. Not just ugly as possible, but just different. It just, it looks different. It doesn't look like a city that you could go to, like you could drive to, which is the point. It, that, that's what it needs to be. I would, you know what, I, that's closer to the mark, but I don't even think that's for Lex Luthor either. No, no, Lex Luthor needs a more sophisticated theme, I would say. Oh yeah, you confirmed Christopher Drake, Dark Knight Returns. Oh. Animated films. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, theme. All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to skip it just a little bit here. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So, so yeah, he's, he's known. And I, I think... It's too bad his life was 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 brief because he he had a lot going for him, especially after the the arrival. Mm. I don't know about that, Fotis. Zimmer said that he refrained from writing a theme you can hum for the Nolan films because he said that would be distracting. Okay, so he's wrong on two accounts. A theme is something you can hum. It has to be memorable or it's not a theme. It's atmospheric writing. Oh, you know, it, it doesn't anger me, but it, it, I just wish it wasn't so um, conflated that these terms, theme, motive, leitmotif, they are very distinct elements in musical composition. And for Simmers to say that, he, he's missing the mark of what a music theme is to begin with. For instance, I'm calling to mind the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. theme right now, Bum 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 dun da dun da da. Bum ba dun dun da da. I mean, it's that's a theme because I can hum it, I can sing it. Like in fact, actually, every time it, it every time it, whether it's the the credits or it happens in that actual show, the actual drama, I start singing it while I'm watching the show. Um, that that's what you're that that's really what you're supposed to do. It's not distracting because it. It enhances the world. It enhances the world. Shirley Walker's Batman music only accentuates all the good stuff of Batman, all the real stuff of Batman. You can't compose a theme if it's not hummable. You can't compose a theme if it's not writable, if it's not memorable. And then the, the, the second point where he misses the mark is it would be distracting. Not if it's done well. And so actually I would say to, to Hans Zimmer, if I had the opportunity to talk to him face to face, is he's playing it safe. 
he's playing it safe. He's actually admitting that he can't compose a, a theme that is not distracting. You can write melodies that are not distracting. I was I was just thinking about it. I was I'm so impacted by a theme. One one theme. I was thinking about it earlier today, kind of just humming it and just yeah. You know, I was cooking dinner and I just I'm so moved by it. Just kind of thinking about it. Um, one theme I so 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 appreciate is Gollum's theme at the end of the Two Towers at the end of the Lord of the Rings films. It's actually not really Gollum's theme as much as Smeagol's theme. It's so mournful and sad and beautiful and haunting. And it is memorable and it's impactful. Would I say it, it's distracting and accuse Howard Shore of making it distracting? No. It's it's just got this, it's it's really weird where he's leading Frodo and Sam to, you know, it's 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 about to roll the credits and and he's leading Frodo and Sam to a very specific place in Mordor, you know, to, to Kirith Ungol, where, where Shelob is. And it's very ominous, but it's not ugly. It's like, um, and you can, you can see Mordor with the, the flying Nazgul. It's very ominous, but it's so haunting. It's, it couldn't have been done better. Like the, the film, Peter Jackson, the editors and, and Howard Shore, the composer, it just could not have been better. But, but Smeagol's theme is, is, is perfectly depicted. It has like a four bar intro before it gets into the actual melody of the theme, but it goes as follows. Da, 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 And then it enters in this. Da, 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 And then it concludes with this most beautiful harmony, which I can't sing. I'll just sing the melody. And it, it, it ends unresolved. It doesn't end on a tonic. It doesn't end on any tonal chord it ends on this kind of hanging because you know that's that's Gollum's tragedy that's Smeagol's tragedy you know spoiler alerts if you guys don't know his 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 life ends to his fate is is totally consumed by the ring at the very end and it's so tragic and so mournful because you're really feeling for Smeagol I just finished the book Two Towers and and there's that kind of moment where it's like you know what happens to Gollum. You know what happens to Smeagol if you've read the book many times. And you still kind of like, there's there's that secret rooting. It's like, oh, come on, Smeagol. Just 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 chum it up with Sam. Come on, Sam. Be merciful to him. Make make it all good, you know. But it doesn't happen. And 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 Howard Shore just, oh, he illustrates that so beautifully in his music. It's just one of my favorite themes. It's not like a favorite theme as far as like a character is concerned, but it's it's a theme I deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate. Um, he could not have done it better for that character. And it's very potent. It's very impactful. And it's far from distracting. It's beautiful. And if you can't do that, you don't know how to compose a music theme. So in effect, Hans Zimmer knows how to write only atmospheric music. Like, I don't know what happened after Lion King and Pirates of the Caribbean, man. Pirates of the Caribbean is not a distracting theme. It's perfect for Jack Sparrow, you know? I saw that movie years ago, so I don't I don't remember all of it, but um no, man, that's that's weird if that's true. Interesting, yeah. Uh, Simmer's music would be uh, fit sooner fit a dark Power Rangers uh, than a D than DC superheroes. That's funny. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know all the super villains. Uh, go team Ghost, but interesting. Um. Oh no. So Simmer says. Um, uh, the, the theme is 
the theme is perfect for Wonder Woman because a woman is playing an electric cello. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, if that's true, that's that's rather silly. Um, it's just silly. It's, uh, it's absolutely silly. So what if a man played the electric cello? Would it cease to be a wo Wonder Woman theme? This That makes no sense. That just absolutely makes no sense. If, if a man were to play the exact same thing, would it be a Wonder Woman theme? And the answer is no to both whether a man plays it or one woman plays it. It's just, oh gosh, whatever. <laughs> All right, I gotta get, I gotta get done here because got stuff to do, but I uh, still wanna go through these comments. Um, Dr. Roy says, give the Wonder Woman theme uh, to a fight scene between Rangers and Goldar. Uh, it would fit the fight scene like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, something like that. Or maybe like a fight scene of, of the Amazonian women, but not it's not specific to their culture or it's not specific to their world or it's not specific to a character. If it's like a, if, if it's an add-on in the score, it works as an add-on in this, well, actually, I actually don't even think it works. I don't, I've never even seen the film. And I, it still doesn't work. Oh, Clayface is also creepy. Yeah, Croc. Yeah, um, Killer Croc is he's 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 a scary individual. Um. Oh, uh, Andrea uh, Andres Hernandez is here. Hi. So we were talking about Batman. Yeah, I'll be I'll be on a um, Batman kick, a roundhouse kick. Oh, those roundhouse kicks in the in the game are so cool looking, especially when it's in a slow motion. It's awesome. Yeah, um, Andres, I don't know if you were here earlier. Um, one argument I don't like is when people talk about how Bruce Wayne should donate all his money because he's a billionaire, even though money wouldn't stop the Joker. It's like, no, I mean, his his wealth actually adds on to his virtue. Like, if you had the money Bruce Wayne had and had the past tragedy as Bruce Wayne had, like, mo most people, if you're being totally honest, most people would say, I'm, I'm going to just live a life of luxury because I had this bad thing happen to me and, and not do anything. You know, that, that that's what makes his character so cool. Like I remember being, I, I'm going to pick on my office mates from a few years back. Um, I remember working in, in an office and, and in, in Arkansas and, and there was a lottery happening in Arkansas and, and they were talking about winning the lottery and some some of my project managers and my supervisor they would they they talked about like oh if I had all this money I would one one guy said I would if if I encountered a homeless man I would just give him a million dollars right there it's like you do you, you do good things with this uh, son or whatever I was like you wouldn't give a homeless man a million dollars I mean maybe twenty or something like that like but no like. Uh, and then one 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 supervisor said, I, <laughs> "Now he did like his job, but it was a really stressful job, and I appreciated him uh, as a boss and as a supervisor. I really did like him." But he he said, and he, he like real southern, like he was like, "If I won, if I won the lottery, I would still show up here." I was like, "Be real, you would not come back." <laughs> you know, people like uh, you know, it's like, "Oh, if I if I had all this money, I would I would give." I would end hunger in some remote place in Africa, you know, some village in Africa. It's like, maybe you would, but you can't actually put yourself in that position unless you were in that position. And then would you really, you, you gotta be honest with yourself with, with that kind of thing. All right. Um, actually, the thing is, photos, I've never seen Batman Beyond, so, is, are you talking about the Seal song? I love the melody, I, I do like the Seal song, um, it's a weird song as far as lyrics are concerned, I, I'm not a fan of the lyrics, but besides one little part, besides one little insert of, of that song, I actually do like the melody and harmony of that. 
I, I do like that song. <laughs> it's like a guilty pleasure. I'm not a fan of the whole song and I don't like the lyrics that much, but um, I, 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 I don't know if it fits that, that theme. Um, anyway. Yeah, actually, I will talk about Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I will talk about Lord of the Rings. Um, I think it's very, 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 very important to talk about the Lord of the Rings score. Um, and and I'll, I'll talk about it on streams, but I would definitely also talk about it with 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 musical examples. Um, it's copyright though. Hmm. Well, if I get a claim, that's I'm not making money off of this <laughs> channel anyway. I think that would be fine. I, 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 I yeah. Yeah, Howard Shore and his score is really, really, really important to talk about. For composers to know. It's Wolfton! I'm at the tail end. Yes, you are, man. <laughs> but good to see you. Um, oh, Final Fantasy is in here, too. My apologies for being late. Just been re-watching Star Wars prequels and eventually about to watch the 202 Clone Wars. Yeah, actually, um, 2002. Um, Prof and I were talking about that. Um... I think I will watch that animated series just to watch it for at least one time because I just I've just heard good things about it. So I, I want to give it a shot. I, I don't like the animated style, but if it's good writing, if it's a good story, then I'll, I'll definitely give it a chance. And I, I can have my imagination fill in the, the animation if it if it bothers me that much. All right. Uh, go team ghost panel says well, 70 was wonder woman is her song and 66 is batman singing along with batman 89 um it's it's a fun theme song but it's not really even a theme song i know everyone knows that you know everyone knows that um i think the wonder woman theme song is is, is a complete theme song if i remember that correctly but um <laughs> it's just like, yeah it's great alan west you know awesome i actually you know i don't mind like that's not my version of batman of course but he it it, it exists and it it's it's still crime fighting you know <laughs> so oh and batman forever okay uh, that melody is great, almost medieval. It's such a weird angle, a uh, weird single for Batman soundtrack, but I like it. Yeah, I, I don't know if it exactly fits Batman, that story. I haven't seen that movie. Well, if I saw that movie, that was like years, years, years ago. Um, yeah, Batman Forever. Um, oh, ba oh, Batman Beyond the Animated Series. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting the titles wrong in my head. Okay, I'll probably have to check that out too. Oh, so so both both Fotis and Wolf Ten like like the Seal song. Seal gets a lot of bad rap, and I actually don't really know him as a, as an artist. Um, but I like that song. <laughs> I remember thinking I was telling uh, I, a studio I worked at had a very um, kind of rock and roll concert um, twice twice a year before the pandemic hit, and I really wanted to do kind of an electronic violin version of that song. Again, there's not, I don't like everything about that composition, but the main thing I loved, um, it, the, oh, the lyrics are so abstract, but, but it's, oh gosh, I love that melody. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think I'm going to stop there. Yeah. It's, it's a little under two hours, but I thought we covered, covered a lot, you know, you know, what goes into, um, an appropriate Batman theme. Um, so, so. As, as far as this week is concerned, go ahead and um, be on the lookout for a super collider video. Um, uh, that will be Thursday or Friday. I didn't, I didn't have a super video, a super collider video um, last week because uh, I was traveling last weekend for a gig. It turned out well, but man, last week I had I had a really weird two to three day stint of being just sick. It was a really weird sickness. Um, I was pretty much bedridden. I, I was just so exhausted, but there were no symptoms. I had a little bit of a sore throat, 
but I, I didn't sneeze. I didn't cough. I just could not get up. And, um, so I actually just, um, rested for pretty much two and a half days. Like I was just sleeping for two, two and a half days. When, when, when I'm sick, I know parents, for instance, they don't have this luxury, unfortunately. Um, but, um, but I, I, I was blessed with being able to, you know, sleep for two and a half days. And that, that actually got me, um, well rested enough to travel, um, a little bit to, to my gig. Um, and I, I'm better for it, but I, 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 I had super collider. I had material ready for a video and I was like, Oh, I'll record Wednesday night and I'll post it Thursday. And it was Wednesday night when I was feeling really tense. There was a lot of buildup, like a built up tension in my neck and shoulders. And I was just feeling crummy. Um, so I just didn't get any work done. I didn't have my computer on for like two and a half days. Um, so I'll, I'll get back into the swing of things with super collider. And I think I do want to do the Batman video, my, my, my theme before Christmas, because like I associate Batman with Christmas. Now, here is what I'm thinking for next stream. Now we, we tried OBS earlier tonight and it didn't work with the desktop audio, but the good thing about OBS is I'm able to, um, capture audio from my mic because you can hear me. So I'm going to use that mic for violin. I would really like if I'm, if I'm well, I, 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 I don't assume I'm going to be sick again. Um, I'm only sick like once every two years. I just don't get sick. Um, but, uh, I'm going to do a Christmas stream and rather than it be a full fledged concert, it might be, I don't know. Depends on how much I get practice, uh, done this week. I, I will do some Christmas classics, at least 10 Christmas classic at least 10 Christmas classics, both secular and sacred. And um, I want to talk about for my next stream, because it's the Monday before Christmas, I want to talk about why Christmas music sounds so good, because there are reasons for it. And I'll talk about some musical elements that make Christmas music sound so good. Um, and so I'll, I'll present a few songs and then like, hey, what can I do on the violin that makes this sound really good? Uh, what about Christmas music? Just in general sounds really good. Now I'll give you a bit of a teaser. Melodies guys, melodies, Christmas melodies is what makes Christmas music sound so good. Um, so, so I'm going to have a, I, I plan to have a live Christmas stream with, uh, uh, with my violin here. It's in, it's in its case right now. Um, but, uh, so be on the lookout for OBS. So I will be streaming through OBS and audio should work just fine. Yeah. Worst comes, you know, uh, worst case scenario, um, push comes to shove. I'll, um, I'll go ahead and stream through StreamYard. It's not, the audio quality is not as good. So anyway, um, yeah, Christmas music for, for next, next Monday. And uh, so violin music, violin melodies, Christmas melodies, and, and talking about what makes music, what makes Christmas music sound so good, because there, there are reasons, there are actual compositional reasons why it sounds good. Um, so Super Clatter, Christmas stream next week, um, and then I'll, I'll do a separate Batman uh, theme analysis with my own original theme for Batman between now and Christmas, maybe into New Year's as well. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. And um, I just really appreciate every everyone joining. Me. So until I see you next, keep producing the art you love and preserving it. And I will catch you later. Thanks again.